To give you a little background, Forest City Ratner Company is a Brooklyn-based development company. Uh, we are born and bred in Brooklyn. Um, the company started back in 1980s when Bruce Ratner won the RFP to create a um, large-scale office, back office really, for uh, the city when um, the city was losing all of the jobs in New Jersey because New Jersey was offering such a cheap alternative to offices. So uh, we built the Metro, Metro Tech campus, which is really large floor play, uh, back office for Chase, combination of uh, city agencies. And that was sort of a development, uh, master plan development that was of its day of 1980, large campus with a central uh, courtyard. What happened was that as we were building out Metro Tech, we built the last site um, after 9-11 actually, uh, because one of the uh, tenants that had to literally find uh, a new headquarter location uh, immediately. Um, and we negotiated a 300,000 square foot anchor tenant lease and built out the, the last component. And during that time, we we're also working with BAM, uh, Cultural District, the city, also trying to figure out how do you activate BAM? Because there are multiple sites uh, with near BAM. Uh, that the city owned, HPD owned, that were uh, under zone. And as a larger play, uh, when Harvey and Jeannie Leffy initially started the BAM Development Corporation, it was that little bit of swath that you were discussing around essentially Lafayette to Fulton Street. The city took a little bit of a back, uh, like a larger perspective and looked at, well, how do we create additional development in Brooklyn? in the right places, which really is along the arterial corridor of Flatbush, starting from essentially uh, Tillery Street uh, all the way out to Atlantic Avenue. And they looked at, looked at the comprehensive uh, development opportunity because there are a lot of soft sites along that corridor. That's where all the transit was, um, where all, what city was trying to really invest in terms of um, public scape, all of that. So in 2004, downtown Brooklyn did a comprehensive mixed use zoning where you could actually take sites that were roughly, I would say 2.3 to 3 FAR and increase the density up to 12 FAR. And their intention was create a mixed use where it would be a combination of office and residential. It was a C54, I think this, um, that was rezoned to. Um, but what happened was that after they went through the ULARP, got it approved, a um, couple of projects started closer to Tillery where the land was a little bit cheaper because it's all about the land, right? Because these are all private transactions. Um, and then the economic crisis hit. Nothing happened, right? And so a lot of the things that got started pre-2008, uh, some of it got built. Uh, developers were settled with some condos. They couldn't sell. They started renting them. Uh, City Point sort of ground to a halt. A um, lot of the developments that actually started construction uh, with the 421A larger scale projects, uh, they were stalled. Um, so then after 2008, things started softening up a bit, developers were able to get uh, financing, and the residential market uh, which actually in New York, we didn't suffer as much as uh, other parts of the country. What happened was basically transactions stopped, but your value really didn't go down that much. It was relatively flat. And then in two, uh, 2010, 2011, uh, constructions restarted. You were able to get financing. And Brooklyn rental prices started skyrocketing. So you went from an average price per square foot for a market rate 24 hour doorman building with views near transit that was probably renting around 55 bucks a square foot. The rent started inching up closer to 60 bucks a square foot. So that then drove the land prices higher. So what happened was that the um, about 15 million square feet that was supposed to be mixed use, it all became residential because that was the highest and, uh, highest and best use. So I think part of that response when the Brooklyn uh, and the city realized the impact of what was happening because of the economic uh, nature of what was going on in the city, it was really residential that was driving it. The office uh, rents, it was interesting because Brooklyn office was very innovative, innovative and creative economy. And it was purely located there because it was cheap rent. It's as simple as that. 
that, right? It was Dumbo, uh, Industry City actually happened after 2014 to a large extent. And so these sort of fringe locations was like cheap rents where they could start their businesses. And what happened was that once they were, they were in buildings with that life safety, no air conditioner, and they grew up in you know, all of these IPOs and larger growth of company, um, they had to hire like a proper CEO, and the board said, hey guys, you actually need to move to a building with sprinkler systems, right? You can actually like exit your tenants. So what we saw in um, Metro Tech was the back office um, tenancy and the city tenancy actually evolved. So we started getting tenants like Tough Mudder. Um, there's actually a education-based company that went public and their board told them, you need to be in your grown-up space. So um, what's happening with the Brooklyn Triangle is sort of trying to capture that and trying to figure out what, how can we create a connection between Navy R, between Dumbo, Industry City to Metro Tech to create that next generation. But office buildings, really, you can't underwrite and build a new office building until there is six dollars, um, six in front of the rent in terms of um, being able to justify a new building. So uh, there's, w there's one new building that I think will get built, uh, hopefully, right near downtown Brooklyn. And um, as part of Atlantic Yards, now renamed Pacific Park. We've pivoted, so everyone hopefully knows about Pacific Park. It's no longer Atlantic Yards. One of the things that we're looking at is of the um, of roughly five million square feet that we can develop, we're, turning, we're trying to figure out, does it make sense to actually take two of the buildings at the corner of Atlantic and Flatbush and turn those large scale uh, development pads in, from residential to office. So it would be the first opportunity where you could actually create a half a million square foot headquarter, op headquarter opportunity for companies that are now looking for new space, grown up space, not converted space, grown up space um, in Brooklyn because you know, CEOs of those companies now live in Brooklyn. Their workers uh, work in Brooklyn. No one wants to come to Manhattan. The food seems much better in Brooklyn. So all those, you know, all of those things, your, your nightlife is in Brooklyn. So all those things have now changed and evolved for the past 14 years to really leverage that. I mean, I, I actually, um, when I started at Forest City after graduating from the program, we are trying to convince tenants to actually come over the bridge, right? And um, I remember, maybe it was like 2002, Time Out had a cover which says, uh, Brooklyn's a new Manhattan, right? And then about four years later, it was the opposite. Is Manhattan the new Brooklyn? Um, and the, the heads of companies would used to get into their black cars, drive across the bridge, come out, walk around Metro Tech, get in their car and leave. They had no interest in being in Brooklyn. What, what's changed that people now live in Brooklyn, they wanna be there, and the type of companies that are growing in the city um, are now, they wanna be in Brooklyn, that's really different. And I would say the same thing for BAM, because I remember in the early days of BAM, it, where it was um, the Opera House and Harvey Theater, there were these large buses that would uh, truck people in from the city, right? Um, and the Brooklyn residents really were not that engaged with BAM. And BAM has done a tremendous job of working with local arts organizations to fold them into part of their uh, cultural district. So it's, a lot of this is very organic in the way it happens. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>